Hello everybody and welcome back to White Day, a labyrinth named school. So what I decided to do for this next episode is actually I'm just going to play off of my old game around where I last saved on it. And I'm going to go around and try to find all the secrets that I missed by backtracking. I actually found this small blue key right over there, right here. And I missed it the first time around. And he's running. He probably sees me. So, I got a bunch of items that I never found out what they went to. So, ch -ch -ch -ch, let's see. Where you... So, like, uh, the... I don't know. No, I got something. <laughs> Here we go. All right. So, the weights. I'm going to try to find out what the weights go for. I'm going to try to use the lens. Ch -ch -ch, the typewriter buttons. And the love letter, all this stuff. Because I gained all of this, and I know it goes to some... I know everything is used somehow. And I'm not quite sure how yet. I never figured it out. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to try backtracking and seeing what I can find. So whenever I find something interesting, I'm just going to jump straight to it. So see you guys whenever I find some. I'm trying so hard right now. No, it doesn't really help, did it? No. It's I fine. Tried. I can deal with it. It's not like this is my first experience of the game. Oh, I never even noticed this one. Anthropods that are arachnids. What? They weren't bugs? Eight-legged. Ew! Six to eight eyes. Body parts are head, chest, and stomach. What's the difference? There's a wandering kind and a settling kind. They can't chew. They dissolve their prey with a stomach fluid. Gross. It's thin bones and squishy body makes it hard to make a preserved specimen. Then how'd they make the one in the biology lab? Next week, Simon is measuring a spider's weight using the specimen. The teacher promised to tell a scary story if class ends early next week. I'm excited. Oh, that's cool. Well, so I guess now we know what the deal is with the spider. <laughs> lady. After all the shit I've been through in this game, you don't scare me so much anymore. <laughs> That's also why I stopped showing the jump scares so much, because I felt like they kind of lost their, uh... Pizazz. Yeah. And I didn't want them to just become, like, really dull. Oh, I, I've never even been in here. What the fuck was I doing with my life? These are the rooms I checked out, right? This is the room, uh, building two. Room one, two. What are you talking about? This is the first one. Hey! Alright, got the 1 gram, 5 gram, 10 gram, and 50 gram. <coughs> Alright. We are doing... we're golden. How did I miss so much stuff? I thought I got the report card. I guess I didn't. I wonder what the report card goes to. This video is already going to be full of me finding a bunch of shit that I should have already found. The Secret of the Pond. A long time ago, there used to be a small pond between the main building and the auditorium. They say that the pond was created by a bomb during the war and had uh, obliterated a refugee tent that had been pitched there. Obviously, every refugee in the tent died. It was said that the bottom of the pond was tainted red with their blood. There's another story about the pond as well. If you write to your crush asking them to come to the pond and they show up, you'll live happily ever after with them. A warning, though. If your crush doesn't show up, then you will die by the pond's curse. Da some a quiet and shy student had a crush on an older student named Chen Yo. Her crush deepened and she couldn't deal with her longing anymore. She finally decided to write a letter to Chen Yo and wait at the pond. But her letter never made it to him. The letter passed through many hands, but somewhere down the line it got lost. Da Sum had no idea what her letter was, never 
Uh, that her letter was never delivered and wait for him all night at the pond's edge. The cold night spent by the pond caused her to come down with a serious fever, and she had to miss school for quite some time. After Dasam narrowly recovered, she returned to school and was even quieter and more timid than before. Her friends tried as much as they could to console her, but she ended up transferring to a different school. It was only a few days later that her body was found floating in the pond. It is said that on a night with a waning moon, a ghost appears who silently looks in from outside the building. They say that the water bloated ghost with eyes gleaming wildly underneath dripping wet hair searches for the boy who has her letter. <gasps> Which I'm assuming is this letter. So now we gotta go find that ghost. Typewriter button N, an old key that properly fell off the typewriter. Which now I have N and O, no. And I know exactly where the typewriter is. So. Because I know there's a bathroom downstairs <clears throat> that has that pack of cigarettes, so I'm wondering. I never opened these up either? Holy shit. Why did I slack off so damn much? <laughs> Truth Finder, Yandu newspaper, summer issue, the secret of the storage room. Our school is pretty good about managing lost belongings. School rule is that unless an owner is found, lost items will be kept indefinitely. They are sorted by the dates they were found and grouped in boxes accordingly. The items that have been unclaimed for long periods of time are stored separately. Oddly enough, there are some expensive and rare things that can be found here. The items in the storage room can be used by anyone. Now let's talk about the secret of this storage room. The room gives off a cold and creepy feel like a, in a haunted house. Some say it's because it's where all the unwanted items are stored, but others speculate it's because of the items left by people who've killed themselves. Let's take a look at the following story. C found a cushion that she really liked. She was worried that the cushion would be claimed before it was thrown into the forever lost box. In the end, the cushion made its way to her, but she lost it shortly after, and the cushion was turned to the storage room by someone else. C went to the lost and found and took the cushion back but somehow the cushion found its way back to the storage room. This went on for a while before she finally gave up. A former graduate recalls the time when he was shocked when entering the storage room. A music box he had been seen in the storage room while he was attending the school 10 years ago was still there, in the exact same condition it was back then. Perhaps there really are items possessed by ghosts in that room. Another mystery is the fact that the quantity of lost items seem to be maintained at a certain level at all times. Okay. Pastoral, Oriental Studies, Interesting Theory of the Five Elements, Teacher Vice Principal Sang Moon Lee, let's learn about the Five Elements, Foundation of Oriental Students. Five Elements are often only thought of as part of Eastern philosophy. This is why the importance of the Five Elements has been lost in the modern world today. The Five Elements represent the changes in the properties of everything in this universe. They're expressed in these five symbols, wood, fire, earth, metal, water, Chinese characters. The Five Elements describe the change in the nature of the universe and can be expressed as birth, growth, collection, union, change. The first element, wood, represents birth. Fire represents stage of growth. Metal represents stage of collection. Water represents stage of union. Finally, earth represents soil upon which the previous four elements progress, symbolizing a stage of change. Piece of chalk. Chalk used right on the chalkboard. Hmm. Okay. So I need two more. All right, there's another one of those. Roseanne cigarettes. Something that no student should carry. It was probably hidden by some delinquent. Possibly. So... Let's try yellow and blue, because that will make green. From combination machine blue yellow, it looks like it can open a small lock. Okay. Found it. Alright, let's find out what this does. Something fell down. Oh. 
Oh, another ghost story. An incorrectly solved math problem. Nahi, a junior year student at Y High School, was a top student. Smart and outgoing. She was especially adored by her homeroom teacher. Perhaps that was why she was always full of herself. When the teacher wasn't around, she would act snotty and as if she was better than everyone else in her class. None of her classmates liked her. Everyone avoided her, but Nahi uh, he could not care less. What does it matter what they say or think about me? They're all losers, Nahi thought to herself. Nahi was prideful and had a large ego. Then one cool autumn day, the subject for fifth period was math, the subject that the homeroom teacher taught. It was right after lunch, and with the cool breeze coming in through the window, most students were nodding off during the lesson. To make the class up, the irritated teacher called a few students to the board to solve some math problems. Nahi was one of the students who was called up. One by one, students returned to their seat after solving their problem. Since the problems were easy, no one got them wrong. Except not he. She had read the question wrong and incorrectly solved the problem. This was unheard of considering her skill in math. Uh, in front of the whole class, the teacher rebuked Nahi, saying that it was a stupid mistake. The teacher intended for Nahi to remember the embarrassment and never make the same mistake again. Nahi could not lift her head out of shame. Her face turned bright red. The kids could not stop snickering. The fact that the teacher's pet was being scolded right in front of them was fun and satisfying. When the teacher left at the end of the lesson, all the kids started talking about what had just happened to Nahi. They sounded excited that they finally had something to hold over her. Nahi was angry. She blamed the teacher who embarrassed her in front of the class she hated her cl uh, classmates who took it to as an opportunity to talk about behind her back even more and she was angry at herself for getting the stupid question wrong even when she went home after school she w she could not get out of her mind she hated her eye she hated her eyes for reading the question wrong it's not my fault she decided she re rationalized to herself that the problem was not hers but her eyes soon a terrible sound was heard and the workbooks on her desk was splattered with red the next day Nahi's classmates trembled with fear when it was announced that Nahi had committed suicide by digging her own eyes out with a knife after this happened a rumor spread that whenever a math problem is left on the chalkboard, Nahi's ghost is summoned. It is said that ghost would stare at the problem on the chalkboard, but her eye sockets would be empty holes. Oh boy. And I bet I know what we can do with that. Because now uh, we actually have chalk. So now we can write on the board. And also I'm assuming this is probably hers. A math workbook with bloody marks on it. I'm assuming that would probably be hers. All right, can we write on this chalkboard? Is there a chalkboard that we specifically have to write on? All right, well, apparently it's not here, but we're gonna have to find out where it is. Oh, oh there it is. 30 gram weight. I know, I'm just gonna, whoa. I heard her, but I didn't know she'd be right there. <laughs> uh, are you sure? It might have been this one. Oh, there's the pin. Our eye testing lens left. All right, so now we got both the left and the right. So now we can go ahead and use those glasses. Find out what that's all about. Oh, E. That didn't take long to find. Oh. What? Four. Airplane. Oh. Four. What am I looking for? Four. It's right there. Airplane. And rooftop <laughs> for airplane rooftop I know exactly what that's for oh it's missing something well I know it's for plane rooftop wait a minute I heard something Oh, here we go. Ghost story, the impassable bridge. Although it was early in the morning, the whole school was filled with an uneasy buzz. Cal Min, a student, was found unconscious in the hallway. This particular hallway was the passageway between the main building and the new building, and it was rarely used. It was built with an in interesting design that puzzled all those who set eyes on it. Its purpose was to be a bridge that connects one building to another, but it was shaped like a tunnel with fluorescent lighting, but not one window. 
This made it seem creepy even during the daytime. <clears throat> What's more, getting to the other building wasn't a straight path, but a twisted, uh, instead twisted and turned. All that combined made fewer and fewer students use the walkway. And the less that people used it, the more creepy the rumors about it became. One rumor said that while walking down the passageway, which felt like walking into a cave, there were sounds of footsteps either behind you or coming from the front. Either way, you'd never see anyone there. Another rumor said that if you enter the hall, this hallway in the middle of the night, you will never get to the other building, but instead dead get lost in a labyrinth of corridors until the breaks of dawn the night before the accident took place cowman told his friends that he didn't believe in such a bogus story being teenagers they dared cowman to prove himself so cowman and his friends came to the school in the middle of the night the test cowman was given seemed simple he only had to go through the passageway get to the other building and bring back an object from a classroom cowman wasted no time beginning this easy adventure and quickly opened the door to the passageway he disappeared into the darkness and door shut behind him when cowman was alone he realized it was scarier than he had imagined. The passageway was without a single window, and all he could see were the small pitches of light like islands in a pitch black sea. Calman shivered and began to regret making this bet with his friends when the sound of his footsteps echoed loudly in the empty hallway. It felt like something was, from the darkness would come running out at him at any second. Calman gathered together the what courage he had left and started walking as fast as he could. That's when something passed by him and lightly brushed his neck, making a metallic sound. His hair stood on end. He felt like something was right behind him. Was he hearing things? He thought he also heard faint laughter. Calman, clenching his teeth, bravely turned around. Nothing was there there except a completely empty hallway in darkness. Cowman had been scared to uh, death, was a bit relieved, until right at that moment he heard a whisper, What are you doing here? Terrified, Cowman ran as fast as he could, screaming. It didn't matter how fast or how far he ran. He would never be able to make it to the building on the other side. At last, Cowlin suffered a panic attack and was knocked into unconsciousness. His friends, after waiting for a long time, all returned home. Everyone was worried for Cowlin, yet no one suggested going to look for him. So that's how Cowlin was found laying unconscious in the passageway the next day. From that day on, the students have called this passageway the impassable bridge or the labyrinth. Okay, so I'm assuming... So from what I gather, that's like the hallway that we used to go from like uh, this spot to main building two. And the reason why, because I actually have looked into this, the reason why it, I don't get attacked and why it's not a never ending labyrinth is because of the spirit bell I collected. So the spirit bell I collected actually lets me go from point A to point B without anything happening. Which I know is probably disappointing to you guys, but... I'm actually going to, just so you guys know, I do plan on making a ghost hunting uh, episode where I'm going to go through and I'm going to try to see collect all the ghosts that I can, all the ghost encounters and everything. So you'll, I'll just try to make sure I don't collect Spirit Bell and we're going to see about this whole like creepy ass hallway ghost thing. Alright, so now... that work? It's like, perfect. No? There we go. Something fell down. The kid in the corner. So he had always been terrified of bugs ever since she was young. She especially found spiders the most repulsive of all. Her school, Y High School, has an old building that was built at the base of mountains. So naturally, there were lots of bugs and spiders. She was always very stressed because of this. That's why she was so happy to begin her senior year. Unlike the first two years of the school, high school, her classrooms this year were located in the new building. Since it's new, she expected there would be no bugs and that she would be able to have, attend her classes carefree. On the first day, there was a strange girl in her class. This girl gave her the creeps because her long hair covered most of her face. So he could not recall ever seeing her at school before. The weird girl's face was so un unfamiliar it made her doubt if she was really a student at her school. She always sat in a corner away from others and hardly ever moved. She wouldn't even get up during breaks or lunchtime for some reason so he couldn't help but be bothered by her. Oh, I know where this one's going. One hot summer day, unable to concentrate in class, so he snuck a glance at the weird girl. What she saw completely shocked her. The girl was chewing on a moth. Startled, so he turned to look at the bug-eating girl again, but this time she saw nothing out of the ordinary. So he thought that she must have been seeing things because of the blazing hot day. Then the girl sent, so he, uh, a knowing smirk. It creeped her out so much that she became terrified of her. 
After that, the creepy girl stopped coming to school, so he was bothered by her sudden disappearance at first, but as time passed in peace, she forgot about her. One day, while on her way home, so he realized that she left something at school, so she went back to get it. Just moments before the school was filled with the sounds of the students leaving, but now it was quiet as the grave. So he entered the classroom and turned on the light. There was nothing but empty desks and chairs inside, just as it should be. So he went to her desk to retrieve the, what she forgot, had forgot, where she spotted something black swaying in the back of the classroom out of the corner of her eyes. So he squinted her eyes, taking a close look at what was hanging. When she realized what she was looking at, she froze in terror. As she slowly raised her eyes, she could follow the long curtain of black hair up to the body of the creepy girl who had disappeared. The girl was clinging to the ceiling, her limbs twisted at inhuman angles. She looked like a spider perched in its web, preparing to pounce on its prey. Spotting so he, the spider girl scuttled uh, qu quickly across the ceiling towards the petrified Sohi. The girl's long black hair shot out like a spider web, wrapping around Sohi and pulling her up. The light flickered twice and the classroom went dark. One long, terrified scream echoed through the halls before it was abruptly cut off. No one ever saw Sohi again after that day. The spider that used to hang in the corner of the classroom was missing too. Ah, dang. So we all know who that is. That's the spider woman that we see in the classrooms when it's dark. Found it. On the chalkboard near the factory bench. Alright, so I'm missing something. So I'm assuming I probably don't have to do it in order. I'm hoping. Because fuck that. But where's the last place gonna be? Is it Brazil? Yep, it's Brazil. Did it! What? Something fell down. Another ghost story, I'm assuming. Tragedy brought by jealousy. Inju and Young He were best friends. Being friends since childhood, they had no secrets between them. They spent so much time together, and they could almost read each other's minds. When they entered high school, Inju developed a crush on a guy a year older than her. Inju would always prattle on and on about him to Young He. Strangely, Young He's reaction to her close friend's biggest interest in life was rather icy. She would only wish for a curt good luck. Then be silent until a new subject rose. One day, Inju heard from another friend that the guy she liked had feelings for Young He instead. It turns out that Young He and the boy went to the same church. Inju wondered why Young He had never mentioned that. It was weird. From that point on, Yung Ji was, uh, was suspicious of every single thing Young He said or did. Soon they grew so far apart that they wouldn't even say hello to each other. Sometime after, Yung Ji found Young He and the boy sitting on the bench innocently talking. Envy filled her eyes. That evening, Inju called Young Hee up and the, to the school's rooftop. They began to argue, but Young Hee kept on denying Inju's accusations. The arguing got louder and more heated, and out of anger, Inju pushed Young Hee off the rooftop. Young Hee fell down headfirst and died instantly without a sound. Young Ju gave a false statement to the police, and Young Hee's death was reported as a suicide. After some time passed, Young Ju was able to go out with her crush. One day, she made plans with her boyfriend to go on a date at school. They thought it would be a great idea to meet up in the middle of the night. Uh, the way the A could stay out of the heat and it seemed adventurous. Yunju arrived at the school first and was waiting in the empty classroom when her boyfriend didn't show up after the promised time. She began to get scared. Suddenly, thunk, thunk, thunk. She heard something echoing from the hallway. Then she could hear a door opening. Not here. It wasn't her boyfriend's voice. It was the raspy voice of a woman that sent shivers down her spine. Thunk, thunk, thunk. The noise was getting louder and closer until it was shaking the ground with every thunk. Yeonju heard another door open. Not here either. Thunk, 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 thunk. The thunking was getting closer to her now. Terrified, Yeonju dove under the teacher's desk to hide. She was quaking in fear. The door to the classroom flew open. Yeonju peeked to the door through a crack under the desk. There was nothing to be seen. Just when Yeonju thought something must be wrong, an object fell from the desk, and Yeonju's eyes flew up to see what knocked it down. There you are, Yeonju screamed, screamed so loud that her voice echoed throughout the whole school. Oh, shit. Shit's getting real. Typewriter button M. Alrighty, make progress. Small key painted dark. It looks like it would be combined with other keys. Oh, okay. 
Alrighty. from the art room. Sol Hyun uh, had a crush on the new art teacher at Y High School. The art teacher was young and talented, and Sol Hyun wasn't the only girl who fell for him. Desperate to become his favorite student, she gave her all in her art class. She had always been gifted with her hands since she was a child, and soon she did become his star pupil. Seeing Seo Hyun's talent, the art teacher advised her to apply for an art college. Seo Hyun accepted his advice and began to take private lessons with him. This was a dream come true for her to be left alone in school with her crush, spending hours together practicing art. At some point, a strange rumor started circulating through the school. The rumor was that there was a teacher dating a student. The rumor made its way into the ear of the school administration, and soon the young art teacher left without warning as if he was banished from school. The rumor was never confirmed. In the middle of the night, with her favorite teacher gone, Sao Hyun sat alone in the art room. The faint moonlight for, uh, through the window rested on her shaking shoulders. She was crying mournfully. In her hands, she held an unfinished clay doll of a woman. Great care had been taken in forming the clay doll's face, and it looked like Seo Hyun, Seo Hyun. with her eyes full of resentment, she stared at the doll. The next day, the school, whole school was in shock. The dead body of a female student had been found. It was real that the girl I had killed her and the girl had killed herself by overdosing on sleeping pills. Even more shocking however was that dead girl was found to be pregnant. The school tried to prevent students from spreading unconfirmed rumors about this accident, but soon the whole school knew and there was all sorts of theories about the girl and who the father was. A lot of people pointed their finger at the art teacher, but it was never confirmed. After the incident uh, people began to report that they could hear a baby's cry near the art room. At first, the crying was so faint that people merely thought they were hearing things, but as time went on, it became so loud that the vibrations felt like an earthquake. A baby's ghost with its umbilical cord wrapped tightly around its neck was also reported as appearing. Even to this day, they say they can see a baby's ghost in search of something during shadowy moonlight nights. It is imperative you must remember not to follow it, for should you fail to find what the baby wants, it might drag you down to deep darkness instead. All right, so that's definitely the uh, baby from the art room, then. Okay, so we're learning stuff still. <laughs> Morse code chart. A chart showing how to represent numbers in Morse code. Okay, so that's got to relate to that Morse code paper that we found before. But I don't know exactly what that has to do with anything. Paper cranes. Still never found out what these are good for. But I guess now it's time. <clears throat> um, okay. Dying message. Nobody recognized me. How much I care and love my students. I only meant for the kids to grow up good and polite, but they only complain how harsh I am without thinking about how I feel. But I can endure this. Someday the students will see me differently. Yes, that has to happen. There was a junior year kid who died while sneaking out of the dorm from my watch. I, am I so terrifying that the kids would take such an extraordinary route? It's not like I'm raising them. Lately I've been doubting myself, slowly convinced that maybe I'm in the wrong. Where did it all go, begin to go wrong? I just heard the rumors today. It was about the kid who recently died. The rumor said maybe I killed the kid myself. I was so bewildered and angry that I could not say anything. Something snapped inside me. My true intention will never make its way to them. I am sick of everything. The quieter I get, the louder they buzz like a swarm of disgusting flies. They keep buzzing in my ear. No one is going to save my butt, me but myself. I gain nothing from holding back. I cannot hold it anymore. Today, I will make an example out of someone. They will never be noisy again. This is war. A war that will not end until one of us is gone. Dying message. Tell one of us is gone. Okay, I'm not quite sure about this one. I was thinking at first maybe it's the janitor since he seems pretty fucking brutal, but uh, I don't know. Guess we'll have to look into that. Oh.
Hmm. This I don't quite understand. Alright everybody, so sadly that's everything that I could put inside this video, but I will be making a part two, and I'm going to be posting it directly after I post this one. So by the time you don't watch this, hopefully that second part should be up and running, so make sure you check that out so we can continue on with this uh, finishing up with trying to find all the extras and hidden bonuses and whatnot. So as always, thank you for watching. I'll see you in part two. Have a good one. Goodbye!